thank you for joining us. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you and welcome. Thank you for joining us and this lady in the back. Well, we appreciate you all for coming out and um, worshiping with us today. Um, if there's anything that you need, please let one of us know. Um, we're going to go to baptism. So if there's anybody here to see Willow get baptized, you're um, welcome to come up to the stage to see her closer. Testing. There we go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we can do a little bit better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We're about to witness baptism. We ought to be able to stand to our feet this Sunday morning. Uh, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. We are here to witness the baptism of this young lady, Sister Willow. Come on down. Come on down. Amen. I, I want to give you just something real quick. This week, as I knew I had to baptize, I actually, y'all know how I do here. I, I like to look up people's names and see what they mean. And I happen to look up your name, and, and it says it was comes from the willow tree. Now, if any of y'all grew up under the old school ways, that willow tree, you did not want to get whipped uh, somebody say, man, you didn't want that willow tree. Luckily for me, I never got whipped with those whips from the willow tree. But I will tell you this. The importance of the willow tree, I found out, is that its ability to grow in harsh conditions. Uh, somebody say, man. But not only to grow in unfavorable conditions, but it can also prosper in unfavorable conditions. And I don't know your life. Sister Tara, I don't know your life, but I believe there might have been some hard times and some hard roads, and I want you to know that you came to Jesus Christ and said, I give my life to Christ at 10 years old, and I want you to know that the road won't always be easy. But because of your name, you'll be able to grow and to prosper. Somebody put their hands together in the midst of unfavorable conditions. So right now, you know how we do here. We try to cover all bases. So we baptize you in the name of the Father. We baptize you in the name of the Son. We baptize you in the name of the Holy Ghost. And we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. We got to give God praise. One more soul has been saved. Amen. Come on, praise team. Let us usher in the spirit. I don't know. I don't know, but there's a spirit in this place, and we are going to overcome whatever is holding us back. I need my worshipers to go in prayer right now as we prepare to come in the form of song. I need worshipers. I need worshipers. God has been too good. And there's some people that need some strongholds to be broken today. There's some people that need some chains to be broken today. We want to give God our all. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Stand up and give with us, please. Bless the name of the Lord because he's worthy to be praised.
He's worthy to be praised, y'all. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. And now it's time for our altar call. Morning, people. It's been a minute that I've been in this position to pray out the prayer. I used to do it a lot back in the, my early days. I'm not feeling too well this morning, but I'm not going to let Satan have a victory. And we are coming together assembled as a body of believers. That's what God loves us to come together and praise him in spite of our circumstances our situations no matter what our mind may think and word may wonder to focus on him and his goodness his grace and his mercy and you'll make it through this day but don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow take care of itself you just do good to make it this day. Heavenly Father, we come right now, Lord, before you. The sheep of your pastor. Father God, we got one who was, who has accepted you as her Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, we pray for her that she will continue to grow in you abide in you and be strengthened Father God by those who you will put around her Father God that she may be worthy of her calling and that's a sheep of your pastor now Lord we pray this morning because we got situations in our lives Father God of all kind Father finances, job, family, we got it all. There's no perfect family, but there can be a loving family. Father God, even them, Father God, who have troubled families, Father God, we know that you and you only are the one that can set things straight. And Father God, let us not reject or rebel or hardens our heart against you. But let us be receptive, Father God, of you, of your words, of that you have given us, Father God. And if we walk in your light by the words in which you've given me, we will hear you. And Father God, you will answer. You will answer in such a way, Father God, they won't know nothing about it. But there will come upon them a day when they will be amazed and wonder, how did this come about? Father God, you go beyond our finite minds because you're an infinite Father. We can't see what you see. We don't know what you know. Your plans, Father God, are beyond our concept. We just do good to do one day at a time. Walk with Jesus and let him follow and let him lead us and guide us as we follow him. For he is our light. He quenches our thirst. He satisfies our hunger. And we as a symbol, Father God, let us not back away from the assembly of the mountain from which you call them unto. Father God, let us be steadfast and not become fearful, but fear you, Father God. Because when you speak, things happen. You're the only one I know, Father God, that can speak. And things happen. My words don't mean nothing but it is the power of Jesus that I pray unto. If I have the faith the size of a mustard seed, he'll move the mountain for me. I can't move no mountain. 
because I didn't bring it into existence. I'll let you do your job. My job is to worship you. My job is to praise you. My job is to honor you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being our Father in heaven and on earth. And give us this day, this moment, this hour, this time, Father God, our daily bread for each and every one of us. It's not going to eat from the same local bread. Some need some rye bread. Some need some whole wheat. Some need some pumpernickel. But whatever it is, Father God, let it be a blessing unto them. And let it be, let their hearts and souls and minds be satisfied by what they have received from you. This we do pray in Christ Jesus' name. And let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Can we just take a second to honor our God? God, you're magnificent. You're a promise keeper, Jesus. Thank you, God. You're a promise keeper. Yes, you are. You're a promise keeper. Yes, you are. You're the great I am. Yes, you are. Thank you, God. You're the worthy lamb. Yes, you are. You're faithful to me. Yes, you are. You're the great I am. Yes, you are. You're God of Abraham, the God of covenants. And you do what you said time and time again you have proven you do just what you said though the storms may come and the winds may blow i'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to Cause great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Cause great is your faithfulness fullness to me come on can we just all over the building just say thank you God for being great thank you God for being awesome thank you God for being my healer thank you God for being my ruler and God thank you for being faithful in spite of who I am oh just say great is the faithfulness great is the faithfulness to me
I put my faith in Jesus. He's my anchor to the ground. He's my hope and firm foundation. He's my hope and firm foundation. You can build your home on me. You can build your home on my worship. You can build your home. I put my faith in Jesus. He's my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. Hope and firm foundation. You're my hope and firm foundation, Jesus. You're my hope and firm foundation. It's on this solid rock uh, that he will build his church. Uh, it's on this solid rock uh, that he will build his church. Uh, it's on a solid rock uh, that he will build his church. Uh, it's on this solid rock that he will build his church. anybody but when I think about him I just think about how he hung there and how he just stayed there he had the power to come down y'all but because he knew I needed it you were willing to suffer Jesus you were willing to suffer Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Jesus went just to Calvary for he knew what I was going to go through and that's love they hung him high they hung him high and I said he stayed right there oh you stayed right there they hung him high, they stretched him wide. He hung his head, for me he died. That's love, that's love. But that's not how the story ends. For in three days, he rose again. That's love.
Y'all know it. Just want to tell you. 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 Stop the music. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Let them hear your heart. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. They just want to tell you. 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 What's in my heart? I want to tell you. Just want to tell you. What's in my heart? I want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Oh, 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 oh. Just want to tell you. 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 You mean more to me than the air I breathe. In the air, I breathe. Say you mean more. You mean more to me. Say then the air. The air I if you truly love them, just say you mean more. Just seeking deep in sin, you rescued me. When I wanted to give up, you sheltered me. When I wanted to take my own life, you covered me. When I wanted to throw in the towel, you love me you love me you love me you love me i'm sorry y'all it's personal you love me you care me you care me you love me. You love me. You love me. You love me. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you more than anything. Last one. Lord, I love you more than anything put your hands together church oh come on we can do a little bit better than that put your hands together church for this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it 
some trust in horses. Some even trust in chariots. But according to the Bible, it didn't say, I put my trust. But the Bible says we, so I just need one more person with me. If I could just get one more person, because it says, but we put. I don't know about you, but I know that I will. If I could just get one more person to lift their hand and say that we put our trust in the name of the Lord. Oh, somebody ought to give God the glory today. Oh, somebody ought to give God the glory today. For if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, I want you to know that we have a, as the children are going to the back, amen, we have a, a preacher that's going to come and give us the word, amen. But really quick, I, I want y'all to know something. I, I won't be preaching in October. And one of the things, I've talked to the bishop, i talked to my sister, uh, you know, usually the pastor, you don't want to go out of the pulpit too long. But I want y'all to know something. The same God that speaks to me, It's the same God that used Elder Deborah last week. Ain't, it ain't no different God. The same God that used me, used her. The same God that used her can, oh, come on somebody, use Elder Theo. The same God that put his hand on Moses is the same God that speaks to you. The same God that had his hand on Elijah's life is the one that was on Elisha's life. God is still speaking, not just to me, not just to Elder Deborah, but I believe he's gonna use Elder Theo. And then he's going to use Elder, oh, come on, somebody, President Carney. Somebody ought to put their hands together. As we stand to our feet, as we stand to our feet to bring up the minister, Elder Theo, everybody just say, preach the word, Elder Theo. Preach the word, Elder Theo. And one last time, preach the word, Elder Theo. Amen. Hallelujah good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I truly do count it an honor to be up here today. And I do not take, amen, this lightly at all. Amen. 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 Uh, if we could just pray real quick and then we'll get into the word this morning. Amen. I am ready. Uh, I want to thank uh, Minister Courtney and the praise team. Amen. Amen. The spirit is in this place right now. Amen. Amen. If we can go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come right now, oh God. I come as your humble servant, O oh God, asking you to move me out of the way, Lord, and that you will step in this place, O oh God, that you will hide me behind the cross, Lord, so they see less of me and more of you, O oh God. Let the words that go out be the words that you would have me to speak, O oh God, and that let all hearts be uh, willing to receive what you have for them today, O oh God. Lord, we're just mindful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, and we seal it with a hallelujah. In Christ Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 This uh, month, we are celebrating 25 years, I believe, amen, of Ministries of Christ. Amen. Amen. 25 years in the ministry, which is not a small accomplishment. Amen. Amen. 25 years of anything is a long time. Amen. <laughs> amen. I, uh, me and my wife were just blessed to celebrate 21 years of marriage. Amen. On the 29th of September. Amen. So I've been with the ministry all of 22 years. Amen. 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 I was, yeah, I was coming here before we got married. Amen. But um, uh, our theme for this year is grow in him. Amen. We're going to be talking about growing in him and how we do that. Amen. Um, our scripture this morning is going to be coming out of 2 Timothy. Amen. The second chapter, uh, we'll, if we could turn to that. Amen. And I'm in the King James Version. Uh, you might have a different version uh, in your Bible. Amen. Uh, but you have the Bible app, amen, you can go straight to King James Version, amen. Amen. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture, amen. Uh, we've all read this before, and I believe uh, for those that were here for Bible study a few months ago, we talked about this Scripture, amen. Amen. And the Word of the Lord reads in 2 Timothy uh, 2 and 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you may be seated. Amen. Amen. We're going to stick there. Amen. 
So uh, our topic this morning is going to be get ready to stay ready. Amen. Get ready to stay ready. Amen. If we look at this particular passage of scripture, we, we know that this is the second letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. Amen. And Paul's encouraging Timothy and offering strength to help him carry out after Paul's impending death. You know, Paul's in jail at this point in time. Amen. Paul is aware that uh, his time is growing short and that he desires to see Timothy, whom Paul figuratively called my dear beloved son in 2 Timothy 1 and 2. Amen. This letter also reminds Timothy to, ma to maintain faith and hope in Jesus' resurrection and rise up faithful leaders who will teach the good news about Jesus. Amen. They must focus on the scripture's unified storyline that leads to salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, in this particular scripture, uh, in 2 Timothy, if you look at other Bible translations, they use words other than study. Amen. They use, uh, and then the NASB uses be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. So the word, or the words, I should say, be diligent, basically is just saying show persistence and hardworking effort to do something. Amen. So studying and, and be diligent have two different meetings, amen? But we should be persistent and we should be hardworking in effort to do what thus says the Lord, amen? The NIV version says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. So do your best means to give maximum effort. We got too many Christians not giving maximum effort right now, amen? We just come up here, oh, however we want to come, and we don't give God our best. God says, give your best to do what thus says the Lord. Amen. Uh, I do want to go back to King James Version because that was our, our scripture this morning. Amen. And I do want to talk about the meaning of study. Uh, the meaning of the word study is the act of making an effort to learn by reading, practicing, or memorizing. Amen. But when you combine it with the word show, there's an act that has to happen you can study read something you can read it but here's the problem when you need to retain it when you need to remember it and put it into action what do you do amen I can read the word all day but if I don't study it to understand what I need to do in a certain situation it does me no good so to show we have to put into action what we learn amen Today we're going to be answering four questions about studying, amen, and then we're going to go home, but I just pray that you get what the Lord gave me out of this thing, amen. So why do we need to study, amen? Psalms 119 and 105 says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, amen. God's word is our instruction manual, amen. Joshua 1 and 8 says, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do accordingly to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So we should meditate on God's word day and night. Amen. Why? So that we do accordingly to what his word says. How can we do what God wants us to do when we're not reading and studying what it is that's required of us as his children? Amen. Amen. I was convicted of that before because I wasn't reading like I should have been reading. So when I got in certain situations, I didn't know how to defeat that. I didn't know how to get out of that situation. But God convicted me. Amen. The preacher. Amen. Amen. His, 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 his elder that I wasn't reading and studying like I needed to read and study. So I wasn't able to fight those battles by myself but when I got in my word I was reminded by the Holy Spirit of what I needed to be doing amen 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 um, next question is wondering what God's will is for your life you need to spend time in his word the Bible tells us we need to meditate on it day and night and meditation is not what we think or we will become to think what meditation is is not sitting in a room and meditating and listening to music and sitting there meditating is having it on your mind every day every hour every minute when you're going through a situation God's word is reminding you how you need to be acting how you need to be walking amen how you need to be talking how you need to be treating others amen 
Hebrews 4 and 12 says, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We all know God looks at the heart, amen. Amen. God looks at the heart. That's what he's looking for, willing, willing servers, amen, willing, amen, children, amen. God's word is powerful. It's very powerful. It speaks to every area of life. Bishop has taught this so many times. It speaks to your love life. You want to <laughs> really have a good love life, get God's word in your love life. Amen. Speaks to your, your finances. Oh, oh, come on. You want to be learn how to be prosperous? You look in God's word. It'll tell you that. Amen. It deals with health. You want a health, healthy body, mind, and soul? The Bible teaches you how to do that. Amen. Amen. Anything that you deal with in life, God's word deals with. Amen. We remember Jesus being tempted by Satan. Amen. When he went out into the, to the wilderness and he was tempted, the word of choice was, the weapon of choice, I should say, was the word of God. Amen. When Satan starts to attack you in your life, get into your word. Obey it. Obey what it says about your situation. Stand on the promises it has within it. We know there's promises in the word of God. Amen. But we got to do what thus says the Lord in order for those promises to take place. Let God's word be your two-edged sword. Let God's word fight your battles. Songwriter said he'll fight your battles if you stand on this word. Amen. Next question is, what does God say about us studying? 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction into righteousness. All scripture is inspired from God. It's all important. It's all important. It's profitable for doctrine, our belief system. It's good for reproof, and it corrects us when we're wrong, and it teaches us what is right and who is right. Amen. Romans 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things were written after more time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort in the Scriptures might have hope. Comfort in the Scriptures. Anybody get comfort in reading the Scriptures? I don't know about you, but when my soul is uneasy, and I open up God's word, I get comfort in reading his word. The Bible says the, the, the Holy Spirit is the comforter. <laughs> and the only way to get through that is through his word, amen? We got to ask for the comforter to come in when we're going through uneasy situations, when our soul is uneasy. So we should always be learning. The only people who have learned all there is to learn in this world are the ones that already went on home to heaven. So as long as we on this earth, we can never learn too much. Amen. Amen. And the more we learn, the more we learn about who God is, who we are in God, and we also gain hope and comfort in the scriptures. Amen. How, do, how does studying affect you or not? This last question. Amen. And then I promise we'll go home. I'll, uh, amen. But, but, but how does studying affect you and I? In Isaiah 53 and 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone onto his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, the more we study, the more we know what God has to say about us, our sin, and our need of a Savior, our need of God. Bishop's favorite song is, I need thee, <laughs> each and every hour. And we don't understand that we need a Savior, then we won't repent. Amen. Matthew 5 and 16 says, let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And I got stuck on your good works. I'm like, Lord, you said no one, none's good but the Father. That's what Jesus said. So how uh, works did I do good? I, I can't do anything good. I mean, I, I don't know which, what do you, what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, we know that the good, the works we do for Christ. I believe Pastor used to say it all the time. Pastor Gail used to say, only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. That's what she, that was one of her favorite sayings. And it's the truth because when you do God's work, when you do the work of the Lord, when you feed the hungry, when you clothe the naked, when you give drink to the thirsty, when you go visit those in prison, when you go visit the sick and the shut-in, those are good works because that's what God tells us to do in his word. Amen. 
When we love others as we love ourselves, when we love our enemy, that's good works. That's what God is asking us to do. The more we study, the more we understand how to live Christ's life. <laughs> as you apply what you learn to your life, people will see how you live. And your life will glorify God. How many of us are living to give God the glory? Do we want to glorify God really? Live the way that he says live. Live the way he tells us to live. Amen. I'm going to speak real quick just on some personal testimonies. Amen. And then we're going to go home. But I just want to talk about, and I've said this before. Some of you may have seen this uh, or heard this before. But, you know, I'll give you kind of just my background. I actually where I come from, amen. At 16 years old, you know, I had a, growing up, I mean, I had my mother and father most of my life, amen. And coming up at the age of 16, I was in a situation where most 16 shouldn't be in. The 16-year-old shouldn't live in this situation. But I caught myself, found myself living in a crack house. And back in the crack epidemic back in the 90s, I don't know if you, some of y'all might have been around at the time. I, I'm just telling my age a little bit. Amen. I was about 16 years old, 95, 96. And I was living in a crack house. It just happened to be the house that I grew up in all my life. And there was a lot of things going on, uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, prostitution. I'm just giving y'all what it really was, what was going on. And at the age of 16 year old, I was, I was living a life that was really not Christ-like, amen. I hadn't given my life to Christ yet. But I found myself in a situation at the age of 17 where I was asked to go to a, go somewhere with a friend of mine. And I'll never forget, I said, no, I have to stay home and study. I got a test tomorrow, I was a senior in high school. And I'll never forget it. Um, I woke up, I went home, study, woke up that next morning and I had my alarm clock set to my radio, and the radio went off, and it said the name of my friend and his age. It said he was shot in the back by an undercover cop. But at that moment, I changed my whole mindset. I said, Lord, I'm not going to do that no more. I'm not going to live that way anymore. You're telling me something. I don't know what it is. To, you're telling me to go away from that. I'm not going to do what I was doing. I'm going to turn. And so at that moment, I said, okay, I'm not going to sell drugs no more. I'm not going to be in that environment no more. I was living with my grandparents, and I ended up getting a job at the age of 16. Amen. <laughs> and I, at uh, 17, I'm sorry. And I was working, you know, that job, and I worked that, and, you know, God just took me out of that whole lifestyle. But then we fast forward to when I was about 20 years old. I found myself in a situation where I didn't have a, head, uh, uh, a shelter over my head. I didn't have a home. You know, my father had lost a home that we had lived in all our life. My mother was going through financial things, uh, you know, at the time. And, you know, they didn't have space for me. I was a 20-year-old. They had other kids they didn't need to have shelter for. So at the age of 20, I found myself not having really a place to go. But I thank God because he put people in my life, amen, that was able to give me some shelter at that time. One of them's here, my brother, amen. I thank you, brother, because I went to him. I said, brother, I ain't got nowhere to go. You got a place for me to lay my head just until I can get my on my feet. And he said, yeah, man, come on in. So I stayed there for about three months. But at, the, at that time, I believe you had another child on the way. So they needed the space. And he told me, he said, hey, brother, I'll give you two weeks, but I got the baby on the way, and you got to find somewhere to, to go. And at that time, I didn't know where I was going. But again, God put somebody in my place, I mean, in my, in my path. And it was my, my best friends. Uh, I still call them my brothers to this day. But I was having a conversation, and it all came from a conversation. They said, look, we just got approved for a two-bedroom apartment. But it's like, well, you don't have a room, but you can stay with us until you get on your feet. And I said, you know what? I'll pay a third of the rent. <laughs> I'll pay a third of the rent. You just let me sleep on the couch. Let me sleep on the couch. I use the closet in the front room as my closet. And I said, okay. They said, all right, cool. Yeah, you can do that. So we had a three-month lease. I lived there for three months. But I was grateful for what God had given me because I didn't have to worry about where I was going to go lay my head at night. For three months, I slept on the couch. Y'all don't, don't understand what I'm saying. When I had company come over, they was like, where's your bedroom at? I'm like, it's in the front room. I'm sleeping on the couch. Amen. 
but I was paying rent, a third of the rent. I was grateful for it. As little as it seemed to somebody else, I was grateful. How many of us are grateful for the little things that others may seem little? It was big to me, amen? And because I was grateful, look what happened. Three months later, we get a three-bedroom apartment. Amen. We get a three-bedroom apartment. So now I'm paying a third of the rent, but now I have my own bedroom. I have my own space. Amen. And this is the place I went my wife. Amen. And so, you know, I had my own bedroom. In my, <laughs> amen. I did. I did. I did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> she wasn't in the bedroom, Bishop. She was in the front room. I promise. I promise. <laughs> amen. Amen. But again, but again, but again, everything I went through from 16 to that moment prepared me for that situation. I was grateful for the little things that God had put in my life. And when I got to that point and I got that bedroom, I was grateful then. I continue to be grateful. And God has continued to increase my territory. So I'm telling somebody right now, I don't care what it may look like, how little it may seem to you or other people, but if you just show God gratefulness, he will increase your territory. He will take you from a one a, a, a front room apartment to a six bedroom house. I'm a witness. He'll take you from a hoopty. I had an 82 Caprice. He took me from that to a, a Audi. Amen. 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 But God will bless you. Amen. I believe Paul said it in Philippians 4 and 11. He said, I am not saying this that because I'm in need for anything, for I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances. I know what is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living or in plenty or in want. I could do all this through him who gives me strength. When, God, when we grow in God and he grows in us, we go from a spirit of woe is me, always in that woe is me state. We go to a spirit of woe is me to a spirit of gratefulness. We go from having that half cup mentality to my cup runneth over mentality. Amen. When we grow in him, we go from complaining spirits, amen, to a spirit of thankfulness. Mm, whatever God has blessed you with, give him thanks right now because he is so worthy to be praised, y'all. I'm telling you, my story doesn't add up. It, I shouldn't be where I'm at right now, but because of the blood of Jesus, he covers me. He keeps me, and I'm so grateful, so grateful. We almost done. I'm, I promise y'all, we almost done. I want to give y'all this testimony real quick because I never thought I would have to deal with this, but I did. How many of us remember in school when we went through tornado drills? Y'all remember the tornado drills? Every so often, I think March is when the season started in tornado drills, and they would, the, the intercom would go off and be like, it's a real thunderstorm or whatever it was. I just remember that, and, it, and we practiced that every month from the time I was in Head Start to the time I got out of high school at the 12th grade. And then, not only that, if you watch cable, they have the little thing that comes on, and like, eh, it's real loud, it's real loud. I promise you, it's, it's, it's agitating sometimes. But they tell you, in that storm, take shelter. That's what they tell you, and, that, and, 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 you remind, and they remind you to go to the lowest level of your home, Go in the basement, amen, stay away from windows. They remind you all that. But 40 years of that training, I've never had to really put it into action. Never. Never had to really be in a tornado. Ever. <laughs> amen. But it came to time on April 23rd of this year. Or actually, April 13th. Me and my boys was at home. I got home from, uh, from work, and I was cooking dinner like I normally do. If my wife has to work late or whatever, and she worked late that day. I was cooking dinner. I was cooking spaghetti and side salad, and I think we had breadsticks or something like that. And I'm cooking, and I'm in the kitchen, and I'm cooking, and, you know, I'm, I'm in there, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, the wind started. I started hearing the wind outside. I'm like, what is that? And I heard the, win the windows are shaking. Anybody ever been in the house and you hear the windows shake? Well, the windows were shaking pretty bad, and I'm cooking dinner, and I'm not thinking anything of it. The lights flicker off. And I'm like, okay, the lights flickered, okay. It's a storm. I've been in a storm before. No big deal. Well, the, I got finished cooking, and then I heard the wind gust again. And it wasn't just the window shaking this time. It was the house. The house shook. You can hear things hitting the house. I said, oh, my goodness. I remembered right then and there, okay, all that training of 40 years, I never used it. Never used it. 
I said, boys, let's go to the basement. They looked at me and they said, okay. They saw my face. They knew I was serious. We ran downstairs. We get to the basement. I shut the door. As soon as I shut the door, we get in the basement. The lights all off. It's black. I'm talking black. All you hear is just loud noise. We in the basement. We praying. I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do, but pray right now because this is nothing I've been in before. Nothing I've been in before. And so in that moment, all we could do is really pray. But I was just reminded of just different situations that I may have went through in my life. We know there's different types of storms, right? We, we get that, right? There's thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are pretty simple. It's just thunder, lightning, but the lightning is in the cloud. It's raindrops. And then the meteorologists tell you that protect yourself from the rain or from the thunderstorm, you can just have an umbrella, right? The umbrella is pretty significant. You can have an umbrella keep you from the water, keep you from the rain. Amen? And so you might have a severe thunderstorm. They say, okay, a severe thunderstorm, there's lightning that can hit the ground. There's winds over 65 miles per hour. That umbrella ain't going to do it. You can't have an umbrella. You need to get inside. You need to get in the house. You need shelter. Amen? Amen. And then there are some thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms, that have the ability to produce tornadoes. And we, we've all kind of, amen, they have what they call funnel clouds uh, that, that get formed. In, but what happens is the reason they, these funnel clouds open up, amen, is because the, the, the atmosphere is unstable. So y'all ain't praying with me. The atmosphere is unstable. In other words, the warm air rises, the cold air drops, and it starts to rotate. And what happens is there's evidence that there's tornadic activity in the storm. So y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praying with me. Some of us are going through tornadic activity storms right now because we got things going on in our life that are wrestling against each other. Matter of fact, the word tells us the spirit and the flesh wrestle against each one another. And because of that, you got tornadic activity. Mm, in your life. Come on now. And the thing about a, a, a tornadic activity storm or, or, or a funnel cloud, you can see it coming. You can look at it. You can see it. But there's nothing happening, but it has the potential to, be ca to cause mass destruction. Amen. If it touches down, it has the potential to destroy whatever it touches. You might be going through something like that right now. Your spirit is wrestling with your flesh because your flesh don't want to die. You got to let your flesh die daily. Matter of fact, it's a daily fight. Amen. But here's the, here's the big kicker. Here's the big kicker. That's not the biggest storm that you ever face. Some of us know people that live in Florida. They just went through a hurricane. Hurricane Ian, I think is what it was called. Some have been in typhoons and cyclones. The thing about a typhoon, a cyclone, and a hurricane, they form the same way a tornado does, only it's much bigger. It's a much bigger scale. It's not just the cloud that rotates. It's the actual whole storm system that rotates. And there's all kind of elements in that type of storm. There's, there's strong winds. There's lightning. There's, there's uh, tornadoes. There's uh, what they call high tides where you can have floods. There's over 100 miles per hour winds. It could cause catastrophic damage. Some of us have been in that situation where we've had life-altering situations happen. Amen? We've had life-altering events. You might have been in an accident, as my wife was, where it was life-altering. Amen? Past has been a life-altering event. That type of storm has the ability to affect not only you, but those around you as well. See, you might be going through that right now where your family is going through what you're going through because it's that big of a storm, amen? But see, God tells us how to get out of these storms. Mm. See, God tells us how to get out of these storms. See, a, a thunderstorm, you might just be able to pray your way out of that storm. You might be able to go to your prayer closet and pray up out of that one. A severe thunderstorm, that prayer is just not going to be enough. You might have to go pray and fast to get up out of that storm, amen? Amen, a tornado... Ain't praying and fasting might not do it. You might have to get low in that storm as well as praying fast. What I mean by getting low, humble yourself under God. Repent what you're doing right now, amen, so your flesh can be killed, amen. And then in that hurricane, guess what? God says, get in your word. Get in your word because it's going to take faith to get up out of this one. See, how many of us have been in storms where we couldn't do anything but pray fast and have faith in what God's word says? My brother's a living testimony, amen. 
Amen. I never forget, he was just, he just went through a liver and kidney transplant. Amen. And he was preaching three months after that. God is a witness. I'm a witness that God is good. Amen. But here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. In that hurricane, to get up out of those situations. And God says we got to have faith. We remember Jesus when he had just healed Peter's mother-in-law, I believe it was, over in Matthew. And he had told the disciples, let us go to the other side. And they went on the boat. They was in the storm. I don't know if y'all remember that. He was in the storm, and the waves were crashing. And it says they was in the sea. So sounds like a hurricane to me. I don't know. It could be. It didn't say exactly what kind of storm it was. But it was a major storm. And Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat, and the disciples were afraid. They were afraid. And they went and woke up Jesus because they thought they were going to die. And Jesus woke up, and he went out, and he said, why are you afraid? Yeah, it's that same question when you're going through what you're going through. Why are you afraid? Haven't I been with you through everything you've been through in life? Wasn't I with you when, when you was living in the crack house, Theo, and, and I got you up out of that situation? Wasn't I, wasn't, wasn't I with you when you was homeless? Didn't I give people, put people in your way to give you roof over your head? Why are you afraid? Wasn't I with you when, when you was when you was out there doing what you was doing and I kept you from the dangers that you didn't see? Wasn't I with you then? Where's your faith? He said, oh, ye a little faith. And that's what it takes to get out of them situations is faith. Believe Psalms 91, 1 and 2, and I'm going to leave you with this. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and the deadly pestilence. So if you are just going through life and not sure, amen, of how you're going to come out of it, trust in the Lord. Trust in his word. Put into action what you learn. Put it into action. Don't just read it. Get to understand it. So that way you know what to do in certain situations. You know how, what word to speak to that situation. Amen. Because the word of God is powerful and it will change things. Amen. We say prayer changes things, which it does. But the word of God is what changes. It's what pierces the heart and changes thy mind. It changes thy way into his ways. Amen. So if anything, I open up the doors of the church. Hopefully you got something out of this. But God gave it to me. Amen. We're talking about growing in him as he grows in us. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Y'all got her. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together. The doors of the church are open. We thank God for the word today. Been married 21 years and still learned some new things. We're going to ask Sister Marilyn to come at this time. The doors of the church are open. I'm going to ask that you stand at this time. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. As she prepares. He started off his sermon saying, we have to study. Because when the storms of life come, it's that word that'll take you through. So I'm gonna ask you today to join me in prayer. As those who desire to come for prayer, you're welcome at this time. But let us pray that we will get the word implanted in our hearts. So when the devil comes, and he will, we can stand just as Jesus did and speak the word speak the word. At this time, doors of the church are open. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you, oh, 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 my hands are lifted up, my heart is ready to receive a blessing from 
from you a blessing from you oh, oh, oh. my hands are lifted up my heart is ready to receive a blessing from you Oh, 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 a blessing from you, a blessing from you. Hey, you may be my hands, you may be seated. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you, a blessing from you. Somebody put your hands together. We give God glory today. We thank God that our hands are lifted to the one who can save us, the one who can redeem us, the one who has already rescued me. Thank you, God. Thank you in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to bring up Bishop, and I know this service is a little longer than we used to, but listen, there's no time like the present to give God everything. Amen. Because we don't know the day nor the hour. 
So at this time, we're going to turn it over to Bishop. And as he comes, I just want to say something real quick. There is no one I know that is a better encourager. He's a better lifter. This man thinks about people and situations when nobody else does. We're grateful that God uses him. He gets the glory. God gets the glory. But can we say thank you to Bishop Alexander for being that man? I can't take it away from you. You're the overseer. Amen. Praise God. Very quickly, very quickly this morning. Th thank God for the message. Somebody put your hands together. Thank God for the message. I'm grateful to see Pastor Austin in our house this morning. God bless you. Amen. This morning, very quickly, very quickly, we are celebrating this month 25 years. And this ministry, like any other ministry, has to always have some help. I want to thank Pastor Alexander for the great preaching that he's doing and the great leadership of the overseer. And we can see the growth of the ministry. Uh, but somebody had to stand when nobody was standing. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Somebody had to stand when there wasn't nobody really standing. And this morning, I want to give two grateful awards. Thank you, Overseer, for allowing this. I want to give two grateful awards. One to Deacon Douglas, if you'll come forward. Let us put our hands together for Deacon Douglas. For over 20 years, he's been with this ministry. We are grateful uh, for him. We're going to give him... Uh, come on up, Deke. Don't be slow now. You can walk a little bit faster. Amen. He's, come on up and get this. Put your hands together for Deacon Douglas. Over 20 years of service. Amen. Uh, please take that grateful award and know that we love you. The next one that I have is uh, someone that we all love, and he's been with me for as long as Deacon Douglas, and he has shared with me. Let us put our hands together for Elder Thomas Gardner. Come on, Elder. Come on, Elder. Come on, Elder Thomas Gardner. Oh, put our hands together for this man of God. They have stayed with me for these many years, and you talking about uh, everything wasn't always good. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, but they both gave me their realness, and that's what leadership always is asking for. And I pray for you, Overseer, that you will receive realness from the leaders that are helping you. Because that's what they gave me. They always was real with me. And people that are real with you, you can deal with them. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Let's say amen to these two great men of God. Amen. Amen. We want to say thank you once more and again. Hallelujah. Give me flowers. Well, wait. I'm going to be real honest. I'm not a flower girl, so don't give me no flowers. But... Give people praise while they're still here. Amen? Because when we get there, all the praise will be just for, ooh, come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, guess what? It is giving time in Jesus' name. Come on, it is giving time. This is the time that we like to say God loves what? A, he loves a cheerful giver. So we are going to, ooh, okay, I always get it wrong. Brian or Zion in Jesus' name. Which one, baby? Brian, because you... You started great with a B. Amen. Brian, here you go. You lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for all the money that we are about to receive, and I pray that we get to do something as a family and as a church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Y'all hold them. Give big so we can do something as a family, as a church. Amen. We can get some giving music. Amen. Kids, it's your turn. Come on up at this time.
like most people have had the opportunity to give. Amen. All right, we're going to bring forward Sister Kanisha for the announcements, but first we're going to ask if Deaconess Nicole will close us out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the tithes and offerings, the people who was able to give and bless those who's not able to give. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, listen, I'm going to ask a favor. It's a real big favor. I really need you to listen to Sister Kanisha today, okay? You don't know how many times we'd be like, we announced it like 12 times. Amen. So please give her your undivided attention. Put your hands together. Let's give attention to Sister Kanisha. Good morning, church. Uh, let's give it up for Pastor uh, Carney. Well, probably not Pastor Carney. I'm sorry, Elder Carney. Elder Carney for his great word today. Get ready. I appreciate it. <laughs> Just a couple of small announcements. We are still looking for volunteers to volunteer in the kitchen, y'all. Miss Donna has been back there in the kitchen by herself on a lot of days by herself. And this is Miss Donna down front. And it takes a lot to feed a lot of people in the community. So anytime that anybody can come down in the kitchen between uh, 10 and 5, whatever hours that you can dedicate, whether it's prepping food or just anything you can give, she shouldn't have to be down there by herself when there's so many of us here on a Sunday. So I appreciate it if anybody would like to volunteer any time. In the evening, she's by herself during rush hour when the traffic comes through with all the people lining up. So if anybody can come out in the evening hours, even if you just help prepping the meals before the people come, we are greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget, family night is this Thursday, October the 27th from 6 to 7 p.m. So we invite everybody to come out. It is uh, next Thursday, October the 20th. Well, I'm sorry, well, she can go. October the 27th from 6 to 7 p.m. So please, everybody, come out. And it's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so you're going to see us posting about that on social media. And it's in honor of the late Pastor Gail Alexander, and we will make our annual donation to the Center of Women and Families. So if you would like to give, please see Sister Latoya Johnson after church, or you can also go on MOC Family's website as well if you would like to donate. We have one more announcement. Amen. Real quick, one more announcement. So real quick, I do want to clarify my mother was not a victim of domestic violence, amen, but she always supported the Center for Women and Families. Such great work at that place. And so in honor of her and the work that she did, we want to continue giving. It's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and my mother did pass from breast cancer. Um, it is something that has hit me as well. And so we are going at the end of this month, everybody, we were in pink, y'all. We were in pink, y'all. The last Sunday of this month, we're going to wear pink. Come cute in your pink. Men too, you look good in pink as well, amen. But we do have, amen. Okay, pastor, come on up. Really quick, really quick. Anybody hold a position at Ministries of Christ? Anybody hold a position at Ministries of Christ? I am encouraging all of our leaders, but I'm encouraging everybody. On Thursdays, it was only a few of us this Thursday, but I'm encouraging everybody. Because you said something in your sermon. You said you got to study to show thyself approved. We learn on Thursdays. Amen. Now, a lot of times I'm upstairs with the kids, but it's nothing like learning with other people. This ain't a lecture type class. This is you can ask questions. If you got questions about come to Thursday night Bible studies at 6 p.m. It's very, very important. And I expect everybody that holds an office, if you don't have to work, I expect you to be here because it's that important for us to grow together in Christ. Amen. All right, last, let's stand to our feet. We are ready to go home. I am going to ask, I'm going to do a little bit of a challenge. We need fruits and vegetables for our love canteen. I am going to ask and challenge you, bring as many cans of fruit and vegetables next week. We're looking for some, some solid green beans, corn, peas. Y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? We, the bigger cans, amen? So bring what you can of the bigger cans, and whoever brings the most, I am going to personally give a $100 Visa gift card. So bring what you can, get your friends at work or whoever you know to give, and I will personally give to those who bring the most a hundred one, I'm only doing one gift card, a $100 gift card to say thank you for spreading the word about Ministries of Christ and our Love Canteen. Amen. 
All right, let's close out in prayer. Dear Lord, we say thank you for one more chance. Thank you, God, for the word we received today, Lord. Let it manifest in our lives and in our hearts. God, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Christ Jesus' name, every believer said amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Mm -hmm.